Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I am here again, guys, to add to your budgeting knowledge by looking at what we refer to as cash collection schedule. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to prepare a cash collection schedule for a four months period. Before we get into that actual preparation, we are going to look at four points relating to cash collection schedule. The first point to note is that it's a component of the master budget. It also indicates the time buckets within which cash receipts are expected from credit customers. So what we're saying is that a business prepares a cash collection schedule so that it can determine how much will be collected from those trade receivables and when this amount will be collected. So they're basically budgeting for what they'll be collecting from their credit customers. Another point is that information is derived from the sales information located in the sales budget. So a business prepares the cash collection schedule after preparing the sales budget. Now sales budget was looked at in a previous session. If you have missed that lesson, the link is in the description below. And the final point as it relates to the cash collection schedule is that the information is then transferred to the cash budget or budgeted statement of cash flows. After preparing that cash collection schedule, the information is then transferred to the cash budget or budgeted statement of cash flows for financial planning by the business. The question that I'm going to look at is one that is taken from the Collins Cape Accounting Revision Guide. And it reads, Ingrid Step has the following budgeted sales in units for the next four months. And you're given four months and the units for each month in 2014. Additional information, Ingrid Step sells her single product for $15 per unit. Sales are collected in the following pattern. 20% in the month sales are made and the remaining 80% in the following month. What this is saying, guys, is that, for example, for January, whatever amount that is generated or budgeted for the sales for that month, 20% is expected to be collected in that month, while the other 80% is expected to be collected in February. The balance sheet from the last financial year showed 40,000 in accounts receivable, all of which will be collected in January 2014. And what we're looking at for note two relates to the schedule of expected cash collections. Let us now move to our worksheet to prepare our cash collection schedule. Bear in mind that the sales budget was already prepared. And if it is that you need lessons in completing this, the link is in the description below. So don't be afraid to click that link and boost your knowledge on preparing sales budget. Now, in order for us to prepare the cash collection schedule, our sales budget is important to us. And what we need from the sales budget is the budgeted sales for each month. That is very important. Now, with that information and Having read the question, we can now proceed to prepare our cash collection schedule. The first thing that we need to look out for is if there is any balance brought down in our accounts receivable and any specific information that is given to us. Now, from the question, you would have noticed that $40,000 is owing by our accounts receivables and this amount is expected to be collected in January. So we're going to record that first in our cash collection schedule. So this is accounts receivable balance brought down. And this amount is expected to be collected in January. And so I'm going to record that 40,000 under January. And don't forget to put in your totals as you go along. So total for that is 40,000. The next thing that we're going to look at now 
is the collection for each month. And we're going to begin with January. And remember that your collection is 20% uh, in the month which the sale was made and the other 80 is collected, is expected, is budgeted to be collected in the next month. So for January, it will be 20% of this 450,000 budgeted sales and the other 80% will be recorded under February. So January sales, and I'm gonna show the workings in bracket for January, that is 20% of the 450,000 dollars. And just indicating that the other 80% should be collected in the next month. So all I'm doing is just entering that 80% beside that. Now, when we calculate 20% of the 450,000, we get a value of 90,000. So of that 450,000 sales that is budgeted for, for January, the business is expected to collect 90,000 in January. The other 80%, so 80% 80 of 450,000, which is 360,000, is expected to be collected in the following month, which is February. We're seeing that we're expecting to collect 90,000 in January and 360,000 in February for that budgeted sales that is expected to be generated for January. And the total is 450,000. Now we're going to look at the next month and that is February. And just making a note of it, February sales, and we are expecting to collect 20%, but 20% of what? 20% of the budgeted sales that is expected to be generated in February. And that amount is $675,000. So let's add that to our calculation, 675,000 and uh, the other 80 is expected to be collected in the following month, which would have been March. So when we calculate 20% of that 675,000, we get a value that is expected to be collected in February of $135,000. And the other 80%, which represent 540,000, is expected to be collected in March. Let's now move into entering our total that is expected to be collected from February's sale during that budgeted period. And that is a total of $675,000. Now, let's move on to the next month and that month is March. So let's enter that details, March sales and the the percentage that is expected to be collected in that month is 20%. And the value that we are expecting for budgeted sales is 900,000. So what we're gonna do is to calculate 20% of that 900,000 to determine the amount that is expected to be collected in March. And the other 80% is expected to be collected in April. So for March, we, when we calculate 20% of 900,000, we get a value of $180,000. And April, the other 80% will be collected, is expected to be collected. And 80% of 900,000 give us $720,000. And our total that is expected to be collected from March sale, which is within the budgeted period, is $900,000. And we're on to the final month, and that is April. Now, for April sales, again, that is 20%. That is expected to be collected in that month. That's 
of the value of budgeted sales of $750,000. So let's enter that in our workings. And the other 80% is expected to be collected the following month, which is not a part of this budgeted period. So all we are going to record within this budgeted period is that 20% that is expected to be collected and 20% of 750,000 give us $150,000. And remember, May is the next month and May is not a part of this budgeted period. So therefore, we are not going to record that 80% that is expected to be collected in May. We're only recording the value that is expected to be collected in this budgeted period, and that is $150,000. So now that we have entered all of that, what we're going to proceed to do is to total each month, and as well as total the total column. So for the month of January, the business is expected to collect 40,000, which is the outstanding balance from the accounts receivable, it is expecting to collect 90,000 from January's sale. And this gives us a total of $130,000. So the business is expecting to collect $130,000 for January. For February, we have 360,000 coming from January, which was the 80%. And we have 135,000 from February, and this gives us a total of $495,000. For March, it is $540,000 plus 180000 And this gives us a total of $720,000. And for April, the business is expected to collect $720,000 coming from March sales and one fifty dollars coming from April's sale. And that gives us a total of $870,000. And the grand amount that the business is expecting to collect for that budgeted period is $2,215,000. And this takes us to the end of our lesson where we looked at cash collection schedule. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.